In the previous experiment, we transformed E. coli to express green fluorescent protein, GFP, when cultured in the presence of IPTG as an inducible promoter. Ampicillin was used as a selectable marker. In this follow-up, we will visually determine whether the plasmid was successfully inserted into E. coli using UV light and will calculate transformation efficiency. Collect your plates from the previous session and observe and record the results you obtained on your transformation and control plates. Draw or take a picture of your plates and describe them. How much growth is observed? If possible, count the number of colonies. What color are the bacteria under ambient and UV light? If your experiment did not turn out, what might be some reasons for this? For example, our minus DNA plate has a bacterial lawn or a smooth covering of bacterial growth. Our minus DNA plus AMP plate has no growth. Our plus DNA plus AMP plate formed white colonies. And our plus DNA plus AMP plus IPTG plate form greenish colonies that glow under UV light. A second experiment, in contrast, showed very little growth on the plus DNA plates. What are some of the possible reasons for why these samples showed poor growth? Determine the transformation efficiency using the following formula and the cell counts or number of transformants from the plus DNA plus AMP plus IPTG plate. This calculation is the number of transformants divided by the micrograms of DNA times the final volume at recovery in milliliters divided by the volume plated in milliliters equals the number of transformants per microgram of DNA. For example, for our experiments, we used 50 nanograms or 0.05 micrograms of DNA with a final volume at recovery of 0.5 milliliters. The volume plated was 0.25 milliliters. So for our experiment, we observed 87 colonies 87 transformants divided by 0.05 micrograms times 0.5 milliliters divided by 0.25 milliliters gives 3,480 transformants per microgram of DNA. Compare your transformation efficiency to other groups in the class and hypothesize why different members of the class may have different transformation efficiencies. This concludes our visual analysis of microbial transformation. The next steps in our GFP production process will include colony PCR followed by gel electrophoresis to confirm insertion of the gene of interest. Once this has been confirmed, we will scale up GFP production using cell culture techniques followed by purification using chromatography. Hey, we hope you like this video. This is part of the series GFP production for my bioprocess engineering class. I'd like to acknowledge the kit from Edvotech, number 303, Exploring Biotechnology with GFP, that this work is based off. Is. Click the link to visit the kit.